Okie doke. Our next guest has appeared on BET, Showtime at the Apollo, the Nashville Network. He's from Birmingham, Alabama. Make it... <laughs> you guys are looking at us like we owe you gas money or something. Huh? Make him feel welcome. This is his first time on the program. Please welcome the real John King. John. Thank you very much. So here we are in Indiana, state of the beautiful license plates is what this is. <laughs> Y'all got the prettiest license plates I've ever seen, man. But anyhow, my name is the real John King. I am from Birmingham, Alabama. I live on the west side of town. That's the raggedy side of town. And we famous for one thing in my neighborhood. We got the poorest homeless people in the world live right in my neighborhood. Now, if you think I'm lying, drive through my neighborhood, you'll see our homeless people standing on the corner just yelling. We'll work for cardboard and a magic marker. <laughs> That's rough, ain't it? But anyhow, I flew into, well, actually, I didn't fly into town. Okay, I drove into town, but I generally fly wherever I go. Now, the last time I flew on an airplane, the flight attendants, they still give you a demonstration on how to fast your seatbelts. By show of hands or applause, how many people here don't know how to fasten a seatbelt? That's pretty much my point. <laughs> Folks, they still waste your time with giving you a demonstration on how to fasten a seatbelt. I told a flight attendant, I said, look, if you want to do me a favor, how about giving me a demonstration on how to land this plane in case I drunk pilot pass out? <laughs> how about that? <laughs> now that's something we can use, ain't it? But the last time I flew, I flew into Norfolk, Virginia. I stayed at a Howard Johnson's. Howard Johnson has a new slogan. Their new slogan is, our rooms are so comfortable, they make you feel like you're right at home. That's what they told me when I checked in. Sir, our room is so comfortable, it make you feel like you're right at home. I told her at the desk, I said, look, if I wanted to feel like I was at home, I would have stayed at home. <laughs> and how about give me that room that's gonna make me feel like I'm in Jamaica. How about that, huh? Throw in a palm tree, some sand, and send me up one of them nice big Bob Molly joints. How about that, huh? <laughs> That's the room I want. But anyhow, nice to be here in Fort Wayne. I had a little problem, though. I had to hitchhike to get to the club tonight. My piece of junk car broke down, man. So I was out hitchhiking. I was on St. Saint, uh, Saint Joe Boulevard out here hitchhiking, trying to get here. Guy came along in a little raggedy Chevrolet Savette. Yeah, raggedy Chevrolet Savette. Stop, rolled his window down, and he said, hey, come on, man, get in, I'll give you a ride. I say, man, go ahead, I'm in a hurry. <laughs> hey, you do all right in a Savette on flat ground, right? And then when it's time to go up a hill, you gotta open the door, stick a foot out like Flintstone to get up the hill. <laughs> thanks for no thanks, man. <laughs> but you know what, maybe it's my own fault, because I bought this car used, and I know it was used when I bought it. It had a lot of miles on it. But you know what, folks? I think my car was previously owned by a secret agent. I'm serious, man. The guy that sold me the car told me this. He said, man, this car was owned by James Bond, 007 himself at one time. I know he turned the tooth because every time I start it up, it leave an all slick and a smoke screen behind it. <laughs> That's right. Got all those special secret agent gadgets on it, too. Like, for instance, my coat hanger is disguised as a... My coat hanger disguised as a... I don't think y'all heard that. I think y'all ears messed up on that one, didn't you? My antenna is disguised as a coat hanger. <laughs> John, you're right. This, this is a nice audience, man. Because that don't happen for real, folks, I'm going to tell you. You mess up a punchline, you don't get nothing from the audience, man. But I appreciate that. <laughs> Got other special secret agent guys on it too. Like for instance, y'all not gonna believe this man, my car is untraceable. That's right, untra I know y'all thinking I probably filed the serial numbers off, right? Wrong, no see it got bald head tires on it so it don't leave tracks. <laughs> you don't know where I've been or where I'm going. I think it might have an ejector seat at one time too. It don't anymore, man, but I think it might have it one time because it got a coil spring that keeps popping up by the seat, hitting me in my behind while I'm driving. <laughs> but I'm not trying to brag, even though I probably own the only very rare secret agent car in existence. All right? Now, I'm not trying to brag, but there are disadvantages. 
For instance, one day I was driving through a residential neighborhood. There were some people sitting out on their porch. Some other people were working out in the yard. So I'm just kind of cruising through there. All of a sudden, the piece of wire that was holding my muffler up broke. The muffler fell on the ground. It was scrubbing across the ground. Sparks start flying. Then the thing backfired. People ran the house. Later, I got arrested for a drive-by shooting. <laughs> and I was innocent. But those are the disadvantages. But one of the advantages to being in Fort Wayne is y'all don't have toll roads here. That's right, you don't have to pay to round the freeway. I drove in on Route 69, didn't cost me a dime. I work in Florida a lot. By applause, how many people have ever been to Orlando, Florida? Okay. How many people wish they was in Orlando, Florida right now? I thought so. Now, for the people that's been to Orlando, y'all can back me up on this. They got toll roads down there, man. I got on this thing in Orlando called the East-West Tollway, okay? Drove two miles, stopped, paid $1.75. Drove another two miles, stopped, paid another dollar seventy-five cents. Drove another two miles, guess what? Another dollar seventy-five cents. They got nerve to call it a toll road. At the end of this thing, man, had nobody told me nothing. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I'm serious, man. And being from the neighborhood that I'm from, and I'm broke all the time, I was like, hey, y'all take my money, you better tell me something. I wish somebody had told me to keep my butt off that east-west tollway. <laughs> they need to change the name to the Frank and Jesse James toll road. Because they are robbed you drive on that thing, man. I didn't have enough money left to see Mickey Mouse. <laughs> and that's what I went there for. But I did get a chance to play some golf while I was there. Now, I didn't do the conventional golf thing. I did what they call ghetto golf. Are y'all familiar with the game? No? Let me explain it. Ghetto golf is a little different from conventional golf. First of all, you don't use golf clubs, all right? What you do is you get your two by four, trim one end of the board, okay? Get your rock, throw it up in the air, and just knock hell out of it. That rock landed in somebody's front yard, you're on the green. That's right. That rock rolling the sword, that's a hole in one. If you hit a pigeon, that's a birdie. Right, birdie. Now, if that rock go through somebody's window, it's going to be rough. <laughs> if it go through a window, land in some cat litter, you're the sand trap. <laughs> you're going to need a rake to get that rock out of there. If you hit a white guy wearing a fedora, that's a bogey. <laughs> nah. But anyhow, um, another reason why I like Fort Wayne, y'all have very nice restaurants here. Went to a real nice restaurant today. Went to an Oriental restaurant, went in, ordered this Chinese dish. Very tasty dish, I must admit. After I completed my meal, my waiter came over and handed me my check. And I was like, wait a minute, man. I'm not paying you until you bring me my fortune cookie. That's right, because everybody here know in a Chinese restaurant, you get a free fortune cookie with every meal, right? Okay, so this dude had a little bit of an attitude, man. So he left, came back a few minutes later, handed me a biscuit with a food stamp between it. <laughs> Oh, hey, man, this ain't no fortune. This is a $1 food stamp. Man, get out of here, man. I had a real good friend that was a vegetarian. We have any vegetarians in the audience? Okay, good. Then I won't offend nobody then. Okay. Yeah, I had a real good friend that was a vegetarian. This guy used to get in my face every day. He'd go, John, don't eat meat, me to kill you. Don't eat meat, me to kill you. About three days later, he got ran over by a refrigerated meat truck. He did. Hey, if I would have known it was him, I'd have tried hard to stop that thing, but it must have been time for him to go, I guess. I don't know. But anyhow, I'm a dad. Did I mention that yet? That's kind of hard to believe, I know, but I am. I got a little boy. He's like seven years old, about this tall. At that age, now we ask a million questions, and sometimes he catches me off guard. Like the other day, he came up to me. He was like, Dad, where does babies come from? And I was like, uh, big, uh, condoms with holes in them? Hey, I did the best I could under pressure, you know. <laughs> well, it ain't like I owe him an explanation. It ain't like he's my real son anyhow, so. <laughs> oh, we got a lot of stepkids here. Okay, that's cool. That's all right. 